Welcome to LHA Church. You're about to hear another inspirational message from Pastor Jerry Galloway, lead pastor here at Lighthouse Assembly. It's our prayer that this message is an encouragement and blessing to your life. Well, if you have your Bibles with you this morning, if you'll take them out and turn with me this morning to the book of Romans, the 15th chapter. Romans chapter 15. We're going to pick up our text uh, that we left off with last week. We've been talking about building champions for Christ, and this morning I want to continue where we started last week, talking about a character trait that will strengthen you, a character trait that will help you, and and a character trait that will Uh, Literally, if you will, will carry you through the journey of life and your journey with Christ. Many uh, in the world today are on a quest to find happiness in their lives. And it seems that many are constantly looking for something, never able to quite get a grasp on it. They're constantly striving and they're living their existence on this planet, striving for something that will bring some happiness on the inside of their life and the truth is what we're finding is that they are just simply not finding it. And so in the world today, we begin, we use uh, all the things to try to help to to solve that. We we think, well, if I get another relationship, that'll solve it. If I can uh, have another drink, that'll take care of it. If I can uh, have another fix, that'll take care of it. If I can just earn some more money, that'll take care of it. But the truth is, one of the reasons I believe that many journey through this life constantly grasping, constantly striving, and yet never seeming to attain that place of happiness that they're looking for is because they're looking for the wrong thing. We're looking for happiness when in reality, joy, joy in the Lord is really what we need. First Timothy tells us this, what we find is joy and contentment are very closely related. In 1 Timothy chapter 1 and uh, verse 6, excuse me, 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 6 says, But godliness with contentment is a great gain. Now, friend, if you want a great gain in your life, if you want something that will satisfy, you need to get a hold of some godliness and contentment and you'll find great gain. And here's what we find. Joy and contentment are very closely related. Happiness is never content because happiness is always looking for something more. Happiness is never satisfied. Happiness is never settled. But joy says, I don't need the world to make me content. Joy says, I don't need things. Things to, to satisfy me. The word of God says godliness and contentment in your life is a great gain. Not the things of this earth, not the temporary things that people are searching for, but godliness with contentment is a great gain. Now, happiness is defined as a state of well being, a pleasurable or satisfying experience. Happiness, friends, is circumstantial. And when things of life change, so does our happiness. If things are going great, then everybody's happy. But if trouble comes, we're not so happy. If things are going our way, we're happy. If there's plenty of money in the bank, then we're happy. But when there seems to be a lack or a need or a difficulty in our life, happiness evades us and we go on another quest to try to find something that will satisfy us on the inside. Joy, on the other hand, joy is not dependent on my circumstances. Joy is not dependent on outward circumstances of my life. People, uh, the circumstance of life, the situations of life, friends, cannot steal joy. They can take happiness, but they can't touch joy. You see, joy can't be bought with money, and therefore joy is not affected by the lack thereof or the excess thereof of money. Joy is not determined on what I'm given or what is robbed of me. Joy is not shallow. Joy is not blown around by every stormy wind that hits my way. Joy, in the other hand, joy is a deep abiding delight in the Lord, friend, and joy will keep hold of you. You don't have to keep hold of joy. 
Joy will keep a hold of you and joy will carry you when nothing else will carry you. Joy will keep you in the darkest of nights. Joy will be with you when the money is gone. The health seems to be gone. Joy will be with you when outwardly we are wasting away, but inwardly we're being renewed day by day because it's a deep abiding joy on the inside of my life. Joy will be with you when friends have failed you and family has disowned you. Joy will be with you when you're on the mountain and it will not leave your side when you journey through the valley. Joy will be your companion when everybody else has gone. Joy will shelter your soul when your world seems to be crumbling around you. When the world is a raging storm, joy will bolster your heart. Joy will strengthen your mind. Joy will strengthen your resolve. Joy will give you what it takes to hold on while you're waiting. Anybody ever wait on God to work in your life? While you're waiting on God to work, joy will carry you through. Joy will keep you. Joy will steady your hand. Joy will strengthen your heart. Joy will fill your resolve with the fresh determination that says, yes, I may be alone on this side, but he will never leave me and he will never forsake me. Joy. Nehemiah chapter 8 and verse 10 says, the joy of the Lord is our strength. The joy of the Lord is our strength. You see, joy, we talked about what happiness is. The joy is supernatural delight. It is feelings of elation that are founded in God. It is supernatural because it's from God. It's heavenly joy. It is not of this earth. Joy is feelings of elation that are founded in God. It has been said that joy is true contentment that comes from internal factors like our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Friend, if you're trying to find happiness, if you're trying to find contentment, if you're trying to find joy in your life outside of Jesus, friend, you're going to keep searching, but you're not going to find it because he is the source of our joy. He's the source of our strength, and he is the source of our life. Romans 15 Romans 15, look there with me if you will. Verse number 13, Romans 15 and verse 13, may the God of hope, I like these words, fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow. Somebody say overflow. Overflow. So that you may overflow. He's not about just to give you just a little dab to get you through. So that you may overflow with hope by the power of, of the Holy Spirit. May the God of hope fill you with joy and peace as you trust in him. We spend much of our life on a quest for happiness when in reality joy is what we need. Now last week we looked at the fact that joy is supernatural delight that is found in the person of God. Joy is found, friend, by leaning in and leaning on and loving the God who made you. God created us, and you get joy when you understand that your life has some purpose. I'm here today not because of anything else other than God created me. God made me. I am created in his image. I exist not for the pleasure of man, but I exist for the pleasure of of God. We spent our time last week, we spent a lot of time in Psalm 139 verses 1 through 18 and we don't have time to go there today because we won't get back out of there and we won't get any further than we did last week. I, I want to encourage you to take some of the words of Psalm 139 and you need to memorize them. You need to fill your mind with them. When you get discouraged and you say, my life doesn't count, my life is not of any worth, nobody loves me, nobody cares about me, friend, I want to encourage you to jot down the words that are in Psalm 139. You'll find it says that your life was made with purpose. You'll find that it says that he knew you before you were even born and all the days of your life were written out before even one of them came to be. He knows everything about you. Why? Because he lovingly created you. 
Not only did he create us, but joy comes in like a flood when we realize that he powerfully sustains us. Isaiah 41 and verse 10, so do not fear for I am with you. Do not be dismayed for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you and I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Friend, trouble will come. Life is filled with trouble. But let me tell you, joy has the ability to overcome the trouble when we realize that it's not me that's sustaining me. It's not my wife that's sustaining me. But it's the joy of the Lord that is my strength. My God not only created me, but he's keeping me. He's going to keep on keeping me. And when that's over, he'll keep on keeping me. I don't know what trouble will be tomorrow, but he'll already be there when I get get there tomorrow because he sustains us friend when you get an understanding of truth of that it'll give you joy in the midst of the journey it'll give you joy in the trials you'll understand that i am not i'm not just at the uh, the whims of my troubles but my god is in control and when the enemy fights greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world and i want to tell you this god has not given up on you he powerfully sustains us. One of the passages I shared kind of in closing last week's Isaiah 46 and 4. I love this passage. He says, I'll be your God throughout your lifetime until your hair is white with age. I made you and I will care for you. I will carry you along and save you. Listen, friend, that's a good passage. Because if you ever think, well, God was with me in the past, but I don't know about tomorrow, you need to jot that one down. Isaiah 46 and 4. He said, I'll be with you through all the days of your life. Let's move on. Not only is joy found in the person of God, but listen, joy is found in the purpose of God. What is God up to right now? What is God doing in your life? What is God doing around you? I can tell you this. God is never at a time where he is not without motion. God is always in motion. Something is happening. God is on the move. You say, well, you know what? I'm not experiencing much in my life. Listen, that doesn't mean God is not moving somewhere. God is always on the move. And the truth is, God's actually at work in our life. We just don't often realize it. Because his ways are not our ways. His thoughts aren't our thoughts. And when you think God's left me, he's never left you. When you think God's given up on me, he's never given up on you. You see, he's a God of purpose. And so God is always working even when you don't see him at work. He's up to something in your life. He's been stirring some of your hearts. He's been stirring some of your minds. The Holy Spirit is at work in some of you right now. He's been blowing across the coals of the fire of the Holy Spirit in your life. And God is beginning to quicken. And God is beginning to awaken. And God is beginning to set things in order. And God is beginning to set things in proper perspective. God is at work. Life is not out of control. Now, this morning, you should have seen us around here. We came in, and we tried to turn on lights, and there were no lights in sections, and we had part lights and part not lights and no projectors, and musicians would put earbuds in, and they couldn't hear anything, and so everybody went to scrambling. We kind of, I'll be honest with you, we kind of felt out of control for a little bit. But you know what? We got into praise and worship after I got my brain slowed down. And I got my blood pressure back down and my heart rate back down where it needed to be. And you know, I was there in the choir and I thought, you know what? If we don't have anything more than just our voices and you, Jesus, we have more than enough. Amen. You know, life does not dictate our relationship with Christ. Life does not dictate our joy, friend. Life does not dictate what's going on because God is always at work. God is in control of all things. And the knowledge that God is in control of all things will bring you joy even in the midst of your trial and even in the midst of your situation. You need to believe today that God is a God of purpose and your life. And friend, when you get a hold of that truth, it will bring you joy in your heart. The circumstances are not in control. You and I serve a God of purpose. He is at work even when we don't 
see it. God can bring his purpose around in my life. When Listen to me. When things are going great and God can bring his purpose around in my life when things are difficult. God doesn't need a good economy to bless you. And he doesn't need a bad economy to do something. God can do anything in any way at any time because he's the God of purpose. You see, the world today, they think they're kind of in charge. The leaders around the world think they're in charge. All you need to do is pick up your Bible and read in the Old Testament, and you'll find out how the, the leaders of the world were not always as in charge as they thought they were. Pharaoh was ahead head over Egypt. God said, listen, I'm going to make you get upset. And he got upset. God said, I'm going to make you calm down. He calmed down. God is the one that's in control. Listen, not only, I always love this thought, not only is God in control of his people, but God's in control of the devil's people too. <laughs> God is over everything. God can do whatever he wants. Why? Because he's a God of purpose. And friend, if you don't get a vision of the fact that he's a God of purpose, when your happiness gets turned upside down, you're not going to know what to do. But for those who understand the purpose of God, when happiness gets turned upside down, joy Joy will just continue on. Joy will keep carrying you. Joy will keep going on. Joy will keep you going tomorrow. And the good thing is, how many of y'all know tomorrow's Monday? We don't know what tomorrow's going to be, do we? But no matter what it is, he's in control of tomorrow. He's in control of my next week, my next month, my next year. Because he's a God of purpose. He's a God of purpose. He's the God who's able to give beauty for ashes. He can take nothing and bring about something. Why? That's the kind of God he is. When a person comes and rains on your parade, you ever had anybody rain on your parade? You were having a great day until you got to work. You were having a good morning until the other person in the bed got up. Joy, listen, when somebody rains on the parade, joy has the ability to rise to the surface and remind you that no one is in control of your life but God. The money can go, but joy will remind you that he is your father and he will supply all your need. People can leave you behind, but joy will remind you he will never leave you. He will never forsake you. He'll never give up on you. He'll never let you out of the palm of his hand. Friend, when you get that kind of revelation, joy will begin to fill your heart and and it's a joy that the world can't give. And the good news is it's a joy the world can't take away. Joy is not dependent on my happiness. I hear people often say, well, God just wants me to be happy. Friend, that's not in the Bible. But what you will find is that God wants you to have joy. God is not, God is not about just making you happy. Because God knows the reality of happiness. But what God wants you to have is joy. Joy down in your soul, down in your heart. Joy that the world can't touch and the world can't take away. God wants you to have joy in your life. Joy is delight in the purposes of God. Listen to Romans 8 and verse 28. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who are called according to his what? Purpose. Purpose. And we know. Sometimes, friends, we got to get out the word of God and remind ourselves, don't we? Sometimes we can forget. The problem can be so big and it seems like our solution is so little. You need to take out the word of God and remind yourself. And we know. We are convinced that in all things. Somebody say all things. How many is that? That's all of them. That God in all things is working for the good. You say, I don't see any good. That's why God's in control. That's why you need God in control because God can see the good he's doing even in the midst of our bad. God can do good in the midst of our difficulty. God is working all things together for the good. Listen, of those who are called according to his purpose. Isaiah 14 and 27 says, for the Lord Almighty has purposed, and who can thwart him? 
His hand is stretched out, and who can turn it back? Friends, joy is supernatural delight found in the purpose of God. In light of the purpose of God, you must know this today, that God is in control, that God has a plan. Friend, you need to believe it. You need to wait for it. You need to stand on the truth. You need to hold fast to that truth. When everything else is going by, you need to stand on the bedrock of the truth that he's a God of purpose and he has your life in the palm of his hand. While we wait for him to work, We remind ourselves he's a God of purpose. Number three, joy is not only found in the person of God and the purpose of God, but this is one we often miss. Joy is found in the people of God. Joy is found in the people of God. Friend, when you lose hope and you lose joy in the people of God, you lose something that is very precious, something that is very vital to your walk with Jesus Christ. Often when people disappoint us, Anybody in here ever been disappointed by somebody? Me and Carrie and a couple others. Anybody in here been disappointed by anybody? Yeah, we have been disappointed, haven't we? People have let us down. People frustrated us. People have made us upset. People have offended us. When you and I lose, uh, we, when we lose hope and we lose joy with people, usually we have one of a couple responses. The first response usually is we'll react. How many of you know what reactions are like? How many of y'all have ever felt somebody else's reaction? <laughs> the truth is reactions can be difficult. Reactions can be explosive. Many times not much good comes from a reaction. It's when those words are spoken that can't be recovered, hurts that are caused that can't be soothed. It's kind of like a bomb going off. And reactions usually leave us with lots of pieces and brokenness and things torn apart. Reactions. The other response we could have, and especially when it comes to the people of God, and probably in, in my life if I've ever seen an area that this has been the case of, it is with the people of God. The other reaction we have is is we retreat. We retreat, we pull away from. Now, all of you in here have family. Otherwise, you wouldn't be living. Family is the base unit of our lives. So all of you have family. Some of you are pleased that you have family. Some of you just have family. And one of the things we find is family can, uh, sometimes it's great and sometimes it can be difficult. But what we don't do usually is we don't retreat from them. They're still our family. They're still a part. We still go to the Christmas and we still get together on July the 4th and we we still do things that even though maybe things haven't always went just like we always want to go, we still, they're our family. But what I have seen transpire often in the body of Christ is that somebody gets offended or somebody gets hurt, and the first thing they do is they stop going to church. They say, well, I'm not going to go anymore because, you know, Tina said this to Bob. And I'm not going to go anymore because Wayne said that to Pastor Jeremy. I couldn't believe he said that. Well, Greg Stanley didn't even shake my hand when I walked out the back door. So I ain't going back no more. And the first thing that happens when people get offended in the church is they withdraw. When in reality, we need to do just the opposite. You see, reaction is bad and reaction can be difficult. But withdrawing is even worse. Because then you get yourself away from the body and you get yourself out on your own. And the enemy will work overtime on you when you get yourself away from the body of Christ. The problem with that kind of thinking is when it comes to the people of God is that we miss out on many of the blessings and the profound joy that comes from the purpose of God that's at work in his people. Now, the truth is there are those in this room that you have things in the spirit realm in your life that others need. 
There are things in you that other people need. And there's things in them that you need. And when we separate ourselves from the body of Christ, there's not that strength. There's not that people standing up beside me, people helping me along the way. That You know, we know the story that when Moses was holding up the staff in the midst of the spiritual battle, his arms got weak. And I know every person in this room, your arms have spiritually got weak as you've been fighting the spiritual battle. But friend, the Bible tells us when his arms got weak, Aaron and her came and stood on the sides of him. And they said, when you can't hold your hands up, we're going to hold your hands up. And we're going to see victory come through this because we're in in the battle with you when you retreat from the body of Christ friend you're on your own you get yourself out there all by yourself you get yourself out there and the enemy will work overtime on your life God did not create us to pull away from the people of God now there are those who've been hurt in church situations before and they've promised themselves I'm never going to go into that kind of church relationship again. Friend, listen to me. That is not the will of God for your life. Listen. If you live another year, somebody somewhere is going to offend you, hurt you, cause something in your life. The only way you can keep that from happening is going and go to be to heaven. But that's up to the Lord when you go. So if you're going to live on this planet, and I'm assuming the rest of y'all are planning on living on this planet with us, listen, you can't go anywhere on planet Earth where somebody somewhere is not going to do something in your life. It's quiet this morning. Must be because there's no screen this morning. It's quiet in here because the truth is we need to be reminded we need each other. You see, in the body of Christ, there are no low rangers. God did not create us to be alone. In fact, the Bible says God created Adam. God put him in the perfect place. He was the perfect man. He was the perfect time. It was the perfect place. It was perfect surroundings. Sin was not in the picture. There was Everything was in perfect order. The garden was incredible. The earth was incredible. The, everything around Adam was, he had every need that he needed met. And yet when God looked at Adam, he said, there's a problem. Out of all creation, God said, it is good. But when he came to Adam, he said, it is not good that man would be alone. Friend, you were not created to be in this life alone. You were not created to walk this journey by yourself. You know, I'm often reminded, how many of y'all remember the old show, The Lone Ranger? See, I can't do that later because the kids will be in here and they have no idea what I'm talking about. But y'all know what I'm talking about. The Lone Ranger. Listen, The Lone Ranger may have been called The Lone Ranger, but he wasn't The Lone Ranger because he always had Tonto. And Tonto always got him out of the, dif the difficult stuff, didn't he? He'd come up, Kimosabi, let me help you. And he'd untie him, and they'd both run off together into victory. Listen, friend, don't try to do this on your own. God did not create you and I to live this life alone, to walk this walk alone. Listen to the words of Ecclesiastes 4, Ecclesiastes 4, 9 through 12. Two people are better off than one, for they can help each other succeed. If one person falls, the other person can reach out and help. But someone who falls alone is in real trouble. Likewise, two people lie close together can keep warm. How can one be warm alone? A person standing alone can be attacked and defeated. But two can stand back to back and conquer. Three are even better. For a triple braided cord is not easily broken. Friend, joy... Success and blessing to your life come when you are connected to the people of God. There's an encouragement that the people of God can give you. Listen, don't throw the whole body of Christ out because one person got a bad attitude one day and said something wrong to you. There's 99 others that are in the room that have an encouraging word for you and a positive word for you and a strength to help you get through this journey. God didn't design purpose or destined you and I 
to be alone. But he created us to be in healthy relationships with other believers. Listen, we need one another. We need one another. I need you. And my prayer is that you need me. We need to walk this journey together. Things that God's put inside of your life, I need to hear them. Things that God's put in me, you need to hear. And together we'll walk this journey. There's people sitting to the sides of you. You need them. You need your brothers and sisters in Christ. Listen, if you choose to go the path of life without the people of God, friend, you will miss untold blessings and delight and joy that can only be found in the people of God. Listen, the people of God, you're going to be around people all week long. When you go to work this week, you're going to be around people all week long. But there's nobody that can be a spiritual help in your life like the people of God. You're going to hear people say, I don't want to hear that. You're going to hear all kinds of things. But you can hear the people of God and they'll say, listen, brother, let me pray with you. Let me stand with you. I believe in you. I believe in what God's doing in your life. Encourage one another. The Bible says use your words to edify and build up one another. Listen, if you've got in the habit, and this ain't in my notes, so this part's free. If you've got in the habit of tearing down other people with your words, stop it. Stop it. Stop it. That's not God's will for your life, and it's wrong. I told you it's free. It ain't in the notes. That's wrong. You need to speak. The Bible says if we're going to speak, speak only what builds up and edifies other people. So don't talk about what they're doing or not doing. It ain't none of your business. You're really quiet now. <laughs> what you can do is speak up words that will edify and encourage one another. Give them words that will say, you're going to make it. I believe in what God is doing in your life. I believe God's not giving up on you. Speak blessing into them. Not curses. Speak blessing into them. Speak things that are going to encourage them. Speak things so that when you leave the room, everybody in the room feels better because you came into the room. Not because of you, but what you represent and what your words represent. When you leave the room, they say, man, I just feel better. When you leave the room, they say, man, I feel like I can do this thing. Man, when you leave the room, I'm not going down like I thought I was going down, but I can do this thing. Listen, there is joy that will come through the people of God in your life. God is a personal God. He's your God. He loves you and cares about you. Friend, he is a God of purpose. And when you don't see him at work, listen, that doesn't mean he's sitting on the sidelines. God is always full on, full court with you all the way through life. So no, he is working all things together for the good of them who are called according to his purpose. And never separate yourself from the people of God. Would you stand this morning with me? I want to pray two areas of direction today. Two areas of direction. Today, if you're just, uh, if you've got a need in your life and maybe you're going through a tough time and you've got some situations that are really weighing heavy on your life and you, you've just come to church today and you have a need in your life, friend, would you do me a favor? Would you just lift your hand this morning? I'm not going to point you out. We just want to have prayer for you this morning. You say, I'm going through a tough time. Raise your hand and leave it up, would you please? Look around the room, folks, and when you see somebody's got a hand, would you just move to that area? And I just want you just to very kindly just put a hand on the shoulder, and we're going to pray together one for another. Anyone that's got a hand raised, just move around to where they're at. We're going to pray. We're going to pray. Let's pray together for them right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I just pray for my brothers and my sisters. Lord, I pray today for them, God, because you know everything that's going on. You know the situations that have confronted them, and you know the circumstances that have surrounded them. God, you know the situations that are out of their control. So, Lord, when it's out of our control, we just say, Lord, I trust you. I don't understand. I don't understand why it's happening, but I trust you. I don't know why it's happening like that, but God, I trust that you are working all things together for my good. 
God, I believe that the world is not in control of my life, but you are in control of my life. So, Lord, today our hope is in you. Our strength is in you. Our trust is in you. So, Lord, would you just minister today to my brothers and sisters? God, would you just encourage their hearts? Would you just encourage their spirits? God, touch them on the inside today. God, give them something today the world can't give and the world can't take away. God, as the scripture says, will you fill them with all joy and peace? God, will you fill them with joy and peace on the inside? Something that's not determined by outward things. So, Father, today, would you be at work among them? Just keep doing your work, Lord. Keep doing your work. Keep helping them. Keep strengthening them. God, tomorrow, give them the strength they're going to need. The day after tomorrow, next week, next month, God, be there right with them, I pray, and give them everything they need. Lord, we're trusting you. We're believing you. And Father, today our confidence is absolutely in you. So Lord, I just pray today that you'll touch each and every one of my brothers and sisters. Minister to them today, I ask. And Father, we'll give you all the praise. We'll give you all the glory and the honor. In the name of Jesus, we ask it. Amen, amen, and amen. Now, I want to have one more prayer with you this morning before we leave. And I want to tell you this, friends. Joy, I told you earlier that joy, it has been said of joy that it is contentment that comes from internal things like our relationship with Jesus Christ. Friend, I want to ask you about your relationship with Jesus today. What's your relationship with Jesus like? I want you to think about it for a moment. Is everything all right between you and the Lord? Because, friends, that's the source of our joy. When things aren't right between us and the Lord, friend, you're going to start searching someplace else. But I encourage you today, think about your relationship with Jesus. And, friend, today, if it's not right, if it's not like it should be, if things aren't going the way they need to between you and the Lord, this morning's the time. Right now's the time to return to return just say Lord I'm sorry Lord would you just draw me close to you today God would you just remind me that you've not given up on me I'm sorry Lord I'm sorry for going my own way I need you in my life with your heads bowed I just want to pray friend if that's you this morning just just ask him right where you're at just ask him Lord I want to be close to you I want joy, and I know joy is only going to come through you, Lord. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus right now for men and women across this room. Lord, if we're searching for joy in anything else but you, Lord, we're going to find ourselves lacking. So, Father, today I ask you, Lord, to minister to each one, draw them close to you. Lord, I believe that's why they're here today. It's not by accident that they came to this church on this day. You brought them here, Lord, because you love them. You have a purpose for their life. So, Father, today, in these moments, I ask, Lord, forgive us. Forgive us, Lord, of the times when we get so busy in life that we find ourselves slowly ebbing away from you. Father, today, would you bring us back to the place of our first love? Help us, Lord, today to love you more than we've ever loved you before. Help us to live for you all the days of our life. And, Lord, help us to find our joy in you. For the joy of the Lord is our strength. So, Father, would you just come close to everyone today? And, Father, I pray today that you keep your hand upon them. I pray, God, God, that you'll cause your face to shine upon them. I pray, Father, you will pour out blessing. I pray you'll pour out grace. I pray you'll pour out mercy today. I pray, God, they'll be encouraged today in you, knowing this, that he who began a good work in us, he will complete it in the name of Jesus. 
Father, ask it all in that wonderful name, the name above every name, the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen, amen, amen. God bless each of you today, and may the joy of the Lord be your strength. God bless you.